You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. The live-action Little Mermaid is finally here, and it's time to remake our Ariel doll. The first Halle Bailey as Ariel doll I made was in May of 2021, so I am really, really excited for this one. I'm definitely going to keep her more live-action accurate this time, but I will still implement ideas and concepts that I overall prefer. I'm so excited to show you all the process. It definitely took so long, and I apologize for that, but please enjoy the journey. Also, this may contain a little bit of spoiler. So first, I will be making her stand, or I mean, I guess... We'll, we'll be making a rock for her to sit on. Um, usually when I make the Little Mermaid dolls, I do want her to have something um, in theme for her to sit on and not just like a regular doll stand. So over here, I'm just taking some paper and also some foil and I am kind of making out the, the shape of how I want the rock to kind of look. I do want this rock to be multifaceted. I want it to be used multiple times in different scenes. So this is like roughly the shape I have. I'm taking my foam clay. It is uh, used a lot in cosplays and all of that. And it's very, very lightweight. It is kind of crazy. So I am just really flattening it out as much as you can. And we're going to go ahead and cover... Um, all of the foil. The good thing about this is that it is very, very lightweight. Um, so it's really, really nice. I did use a lot of the FOMO clay in the end. Um, you know, making adjustments here and there. So yeah, and unfortunately it doesn't really take a lot of the details and textures. Um, as you can see, I was trying to use the foil to kind of give it some rock te textures, but it wouldn't really take it as much. I feel like this clay is really used really well in terms of like detailing after it's already been cured. Like I see this clay used a lot in a lot of armor pieces or like weapons and everything like that. This is what we have after it's been cured as you can see. Like I said, I made a lot of adjustments to it. But this is roughly the shape. You guys can definitely change it up if you'd like. But I thought this would be perfect for my um, intended use. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint it. And we're starting it off with a really, really warm brown color. After that, I am kind of dry brushing the high points and also the smooth points of the rock with kind of like this beige, um, lighter brown. So, you know, something where the sun will hit it a little bit more. I'm not sure if um, rocks bleach in the sun over time, but I'm just assuming it does. It does. And for the darker parts, um, it's like the crevices, like the under part of the, the rock, I'm dry brushing it with black just to really give it some dimension. Using gray, really, really watered down gray, I am doing a wash all over the entire rock. This one will just give it more of a granite, kind of like old rock feel to it. Again, I am going in with brown and I am washing it with a really light brown color. So this is pretty much what we have. And after it's dried, uh, obviously, as you can see, it is very matte, but I really like the shiny look. I like the wet look, so I'm just taking my um, gloss glaze and I am um, making everything glossy. And now we're finally done with Ariel's Rock. As you can see, it is so, so nice. I love the color of it. I just love the blend of grays and browns and black here and there. It's really nice. Now let's go ahead and work on Ariel herself. Now this is the doll that I will be using. As you can see, this is the village dress that Ariel wore in the movie. 
And, um, but for this one, we're actually going to be using only her um, face. So we're going to remove her face. But I do want to showcase how the doll looks. Um, you know, it's a budget doll, but I think her face and her hair is absolutely amazing. So you can definitely just put it on a made-to-move Barbie and it would look really, really great. The mold of her face is so detailed and it really does look like Halle Bailey's face like her shape and everything her lips um her eyes so i am really really excited to be working on her face but i will be using yarn for her these two specific colors i want it to be this kind of really warm lighter red like almost like a true red and then also this kind of burgundy color i thought having those two colors would look really really good of course, as per usual, let's go ahead and clean up her hair. Let's cut it and remove it. And um, yeah, we have to get ready for rerouting. Before we give her back some hair, I do want to remove her factory paint. Sometimes it can be distracting to have the factory paint on. Um, this one, as you can see, is a little bit more tedious and difficult to remove. It is the pixelated style that Mattel is using. At least for the eyes and also the lips, the hairline was the regular style of factory paint. So this part, you really have to scrape it a little bit. Um, and I am using pure acetone for this and usually pure acetone is so like effective but not for this one but look at this beautiful mold it even kind of has the mold on her eyebrows which is really really nice and helpful when it comes to placement so they did a really good job with this face mold now that we have our yarn all ready, as you can see, oh, I love these colors. And now let's go ahead and grab our hair tool, our rebooting tool. This one, I believe, is from dollyhair.com, if I remember correctly. And then the needle I just get from, like, the dollar store. Maybe it's not a good idea because they always break on me. Surprisingly, this one, this time, I didn't break any needles, which is really, really great. So the trick when it comes to, like, yarn rerouting, especially if you're going to have this kind of like braided um, twist style definitely root the entire perimeter of the doll's head and maybe root here and there in the middle because it will really be a lot of yarn like it'll, it'll, you'll have a lot of hair to work with and in the end I end up um, trimming a lot of hair off so just be mindful of that in order to lock everything in, I will be using Fabri-Tac glue and you just want to squeeze that inside her, the doll's head very, very um, well. Like, make sure you almost fill it up if you can. And you just want to squish it, make sure everything is covered. And after maybe like a day, um, it should be completely cured and look how much hair she has. And she's only going to have more hair because we're actually going to unravel this yarn. I do want her to have thinner type of twist. I mean, look at the difference. It definitely like doubles, if not triples, how much hair she has. And there you have it. Some hair I actually left as like a double type of twist and then some hair I made it individual. For some reason though, this type of yarn was very very fragile when you unravel it by itself. Like if it was just one. So there was a lot of breakage but look how thick this hair is. So we definitely need to trim off a lot of pieces and I did that off camera. And uh, yeah, this is what we have. It's a little bit more flatter. Still has a lot of volume, but it's still really good. Again, this is a doll collector's nightmare, but for Ariel, we have to. You know, this is what I did for the other doll. And I want to do it again, which is giving her hair um, tinsel. Because I just want her hair to really be like glimmering and like sparkling and everything. I feel like the tinsel would really give us the effect, you know? So as usual, I start in the beginning and then you just want to go ahead and go to the very root of the hair and tie it, double tie it, make sure it's secured. And then you take scissors over here and you just curl it. I don't know how to describe this motion, but this is how you curl ribbons, I guess. So you should get like a spiral curl 
kind of like a ringlet. And then after that, you just go ahead and tie it around the hair individually. So yes, this is very mundane, but look at the effect. It is so, so nice and it's, it's great. It is very worth it. It is very time consuming, so make sure you put on a good show and just have fun with it, you know? You could definitely do other colors too if you want her to have like a multifaceted hair color. Um, or at least like the shine and glitter effect of it. So I can definitely imagine like maybe gold, maybe pink even, or purple. I feel like that would look really good if you were to go with the red hair. And after like a day or two, um, we are finally done. And oh my god, it's coming together. You know, I love a side part. And I think this is like the vibe that we're gonna go for. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the face as usual. You want to make sure you spray the face with Mr. Super Clear in order to prime it and also set, set it later on. And oh my god, this face mold is just everything. I am t taking my watercolor pencils and I am mapping out Halle Bailey's amazing features. And of course, you want to have multiple reference photos. So my first area doll, I actually referenced Halle smiling, like really, really smiling. But for this one, I kind of wanted her to have more of a serene, kind of a more like toned down type of smile, like smiling from within type of look. Obviously because the doll doesn't really have like a smiling, like an overly smiling face. So I thought this would look really good. As you can see, I have her teeth a little bit showing, but I'm gonna end up closing that in the end, and she's just gonna have a closed mouth smile. You guys know how I love to blush, and for this one, I was trying to blush kind of like in the contours of the doll's cheeks, because usually Hallie's makeup, when she's doing like full glam, she has a very, very strategic way of blushing, and it's really, really nice. It's almost like a contour. So that's kind of what I was trying to do. And yes, for this one, I am referencing a lot of Halle Bailey in her like red carpet looks, like the really glam look, especially when she was doing it for like the Little Mermaid premieres and red carpets. So that's definitely what I was trying to go for um, this doll's look. Obviously, I know that the Ariel live action that we got, she doesn't really have like a makeup makeup look. If anything, she had a very, very like... It's a very, very, like, toned-down blush and makeup look. She barely had eyeshadow. I think, like, the close-up, she probably had, like, glitter on her eyelids. But not, like, a makeup look. So, for this one, I was definitely taking the inspiration from Halle Bailey's um, red carpet moments. And also her Instagram and everything. Ugh, she, she has amazing looks. I'm doing a little bit of smoky eye just to really deepen her eyelids to make sure that it looks more contoured and she has like natural shadows. Of course, it wouldn't be Halle Bailey without her beauty marks, so I am just adding that now. To make her lips a little bit more natural looking, I am adding like the vertical lines on the lips, you know, like kind of like the wrinkles on the lips. This will just emphasize that the lips kind of has texture and that it isn't like a lipstick look. Of course, you guys know how I am with highlighter. And of course, she's a mermaid, so duh, it's, it's a need. I'm using uh, two highlighters just for her face and then I'll have more on her body. But this is a uh, Resin Metallic Pigment Powders. It is great for dull highlighting.
Let's take a break from the face and work on her body. This is the made to move that I will be using. I believe this is the soccer player made to move. Um, her skin tone with the Ariel doll isn't completely matching, but I mean, to be fair, this doll's head and also its body isn't completely matching either because they're both different plastics. Like the head is a little bit more cool tone while the body is more warm tone as you can see. So it's the same way. Let's go ahead and remove her head. Um, you're gonna go to the headless doll box somewhere. Um, we are just gonna be using your body. For your body, we'll only be using your torso. <laughs> um, obviously we're gonna be sculpting the tail so we don't need her legs and I do want more posability when it when it comes to my second Ariel doll. The first Ariel doll I used was, I believe, Jasmine's body from the Disney store. So she has a little bit of articulation, but this one just has like the side swiveling, which I think will help with a lot of poses as well. For the tail, I'm going to be building an armature. So I'm just using some wire to be the base of her tail. Um, I'm using hot glue to kind of adhere it temporarily. And then her tail inside is going to be made out of foil. I have learned from my first Ariel doll that the tail... I mean, I, I, I don't know why I made her tail short. I think it's because it was kind of skinny. So I referenced my Halle Bailey mermaid doll that I have on the side for this 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 doll's um, tail length and I actually made it longer. So I hope this will be a little bit more of an appropriate look, especially because she's also still sitting down. Um, but I think it is much more of a grand look than the first doll that I made. So I hope you guys enjoy um, the size of this tail and I, I hope it's, it's perfect this time. Again, we're gonna be using epoxy sculpt to um, build her tail. This is gonna be um, what her tail is made out of. And you wanna make sure that you kinda of blend it in her skin. You guys know I like my mermaids to have the blended um, scale effect. I don't really like the harsh solid cutout of them wearing a tail unless that's the look. But for the most part, if we're going for a more fantastical mermaid, I definitely like it when the tail, when it looks like it's blended to their body. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing for this one. I have no idea why I decided to sand this, e even though it's going to be covered in scales anyway, but... Um... I mean, there were some harsh edges here and there, so I guess it's fine that I'm sanding it. But I feel like it could have been skipped, honestly. Now we have her tail all smooth, and this is her pose. It looks so, so good already. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint the tail. I first want to make sure that it blends in with her actual skin tone. I don't know why, but I tend to always do that first. I want to make sure that the skin tone is matched completely before I add the tail color. And then of course I go in with the green and um, I try to blend that into her torso. Um, if you guys want to try this without the scales, you can definitely just use paint. You can even like maybe add some glitter here and there, but the new Ariel doll that we have, or the new Ariel design, her tail kind of has multicolor. It's not just like a green, like solid look. So for this one, I'm trying to kind of show you guys how you can achieve this look um, by just using paint and even like glitter if you want. But you guys know that we like to be extra in this channel, so I will be covering her entire tail with scales. And these are custom made by Ejimuti on Instagram. Thank you again, Ejimuti, um, for 
always helping me out when it comes to mermaids and scales and I asked him to give me multicolors um, scales this time because we want to really try to go for the movie accurate color. So he gave me purple, green, pink, and also light blue. So Ariel's tail now has kind of a pink shimmer in the very bottom of it. So I am working my way up. You want to make sure that you start in the very bottom of the tail and work your way up with scales because the scales are overlapping each other. So you definitely always want to try and start from the bottom of the tail. As you can see over here, I was trying to blend in the pink with the green, with the purple, and then with the actual green that she has. It was a little bit difficult because there's no like actual transitional colors that I was using. So what I was trying to do is I would try to make some parts PC just so that it looks like it's blended in. But we are going to be covering this later on with another... Um, type of glitter that I like putting on top of the scales to really make it look more uniform. So let's do that later on. I think doing the scale took maybe about four days um, just because I was using Mod Podge to adhere the scales and Mod Podge kind of, it, it takes a while for it to, to dry and completely cure for some reason. But um, yeah, it took, this took a while. As you can see, I kind of incorporated a lot of the blue or like the aqua blue color on the side of her tail and then the green is in the middle. So it kind of frames her green tail in a way, you know, kind of like contours it, which is really cool. While her tail dries, I do want to work on her bra. And of course, in the live action, she's not really wearing the seashells anymore. It's more of it's more like the scale bra, which I wish it wasn't like a bandeau bra, but this is my take on it. This is how I would have loved um on how it should have looked. Now this is the two glitter that I will be putting on top. As you can see, one is kind of like pink and white, and then the other is more of the really green, like the aerial green that I like. And this will really help us blend in those scales together because right now they're a little bit cr kind of crazy looking. They're not blended. So hopefully with the help of these glitters, we're gonna be covering every single scale with this type of glitter. And this is also going to be the transitional glitter that goes onto her skin. As you can see over here, I am trying to blend in her bra kind of like onto her skin, like strategically. Um, that's how I like um, this design. And this is kind of what I did for the first doll also that I made. So I'm just kind of referencing that. And before we add the glitter on top of these scales, I do want to show you guys how it looks. Um, as you can see, it's still really, really nice. It has a really beautiful shimmer effect, but it's not as blended as I would like it to be. The green and the blue are, or the mint blue are not as blended. The purple on the side a little bit is just right there. And definitely the pink in the middle is very, it's very solid, at least for me. Um, I tried to, bl to blend it out by diffusing it and kind of scattering the color which I don't think is as effective as I thought it would be. So I'm really hoping that the glitter on top of the scales will really blend it together. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Again, um, this is actually included in like maybe the four days that I was saying that this took. I don't think it took longer than a week, but this one definitely was one of the mundane parts, you know. Um, but it was very, very satisfying to cover everything again with this glitter. It really did help. And in the end, I was so excited to see it all come together. Right now, the colors are a little crazy because it's on top of a white glue. But after the glue dries, it's obviously going to be clear. And then you'll see the effect and the color of it. Let's wait for her scales to dry and now let's go ahead and work on her fins. So I'm just kind of like drawing the general look I'm trying to go for for her fins. Um, again, this is a little bit more of a movie, um, not movie accurate, but movie inspired fins. Um, but my take on it, of course, you know, everything is my take on it. <laughs> so I try to always reference, of course, like the cartoon tale. Um, or like the cartoon aesthetics and trying to blend that in with the live-action um, look. So for her fins, I'm gonna be using these two Angelica films or... Actually, I feel like these were cellophanes. They weren't working the same way as the Angelica film. So I think these are just regular cellophanes. I'm not sure if those are different or the same, but um, yeah. This is gonna be her hip fins. In the live action, she actually retains the hip fins. So over here, I am just um, blasting the cellophane piece with my heat gun to give the really wrinkled effect. I grew to love the wrinkle effect when it comes to the Angelica film. Um, a lot of people in the, in the past have told me it makes it look more realistic, so I really like that. I'm taking a candle, we need some sorts of fire, and I will be using that to trim the sides of the Angelica film. I feel like this gives it more of the mermaid look, like in terms of the edges. It's very, very, um, it's a lot of trial and error, let's just say that. I had to do a lot of fins, um, but this is the four that I ended up with. I actually thought I was going to layer it, but I ended up just using one for each side because it was getting a little too busy. And obviously, even though I do like the, you know, the drama, I still want it to look cohesive and not crazy looking. And now we're doing the same thing with her fin tails um, or tail fin. Um, kind of cutting out the basic shape of it and I'm just using fire again to trim the edges. And here is her fin tails. Why are you saying fin tails? Tail fins. And I'm actually layering this with another set of fins so it has more dimension because her new tail now, she has like kind of like um, she has a lot of fins. So this is my uh, version of it, my take on it. And I also want to add some uh, like lower tail fins. Um, I feel like that really adds to kind of like the live action effect of this doll. So I actually forgot to body blush her, so I covered everything with tape, or at least like the important part, um, because if you spray Mr. Super Clear on anything but the doll, it will make it matte and it will take away the shine. 
so I had to make sure that I am protecting the scales from Mr. Super Clear. So I'm just here, you know, giving her some texture, giving her some contouring, some blushing. You guys know how I, how I like it. And um, I'm just contouring and blushing everything. I feel like this also added to kind of like her mermaid look, you know? And of course, we are highlighting her entire body as well. We're pu putting the glitters everywhere. And actually, I was putting purple on her chest too to kind of really help blend in her scales. After that, of course, you want to make sure that you spray her body with Mr. Super Clear to save it. And I have reattached her head. I rarely work like this. You guys know I usually work with a head completely on all already, but it was so difficult, but it was fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and gloss up her lips. You wanna make sure the lips look wet and shiny, shimmering, splendid. And we are finally able to reveal her hair. Oh my god, it's coming together. This is so exciting to see. And voila, look at it. Ah, it's so good. Oh my, oh my god. God, it's so slow. Good. Now it's time for some lashes. I had to think about this because I was like, she looks really good without lashes, but I feel like the lashes is necessary. Um, so we're just gluing some individual fake lashes. I believe that I use six or seven per eye, if I remember correctly. And of course, we will be trimming this later on. For her earrings, I kept it simple this time, and I'm just going to be using pearl and also some pins. So this doll, this time, is going to be less accessorized because obviously the live-action movie, she's a little bit more simple. However, I still want to give her the glam that I like, so everything else that I can glamorize, I will. But I also do want her to have more of a simple look. I still feel like she needs a, f a flower on the side of her hair, which I stole from the first Ariel doll. Um, I am making it a little bit more pink. I'm using a pearlescent pink paint, and I'm also adding some kind of like lavender in the base of it. I feel like the purple really, really gives it a more um, kind of like a fun vibe, and I feel like it matches this Ariel doll better. And now I have to like find um, something for the other doll because it's she's missing her her flowers, you know. Let's go ahead and give her some manicure. So over here, I'm just using a lighter beige as um, kind of like a base for her nails, and then I'm going back at it with pearlescent pink. And this is um, in reference to Halle Bailey's nails in the live action. She kind of has like more nude and a little bit more um, natural looking. For Sebastian and Flounder, I also stole this from the first Ariel doll. Um, however, I decided to actually maybe change Flounder. Um, Sebastian's gonna stay. Sebastian is perfect, literally. A lot of you guys said Sebastian was a lobster. I told you he was a crab. Um, but for Flounder, I'm d I definitely want him to be bigger. I feel like my problem with a live-action Flounder is that he was so small and then also they changed his color. So like he was blending into the background so much. I'm doing the same exact color scheme, honestly, but just on a bigger fish. And I feel like this actually looks more like the animated flounder because the animated flounder was like, he was huge and he was like rounded. So we're keeping the, the flat fish to reference the, the live action, but we're making it bigger and we're making it really, really colorful like the animated one. What did you guys think of the Little Mermaid live action movie? Comment down below what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. I overall really, really enjoyed it. There were some things that I didn't really enjoy because I kind of look at all the details, um, especially like the CGI of everything. But yeah, comment down below what you guys thought of the new Little Mermaid movie. I'm really excited to hear what you guys think. <laughs> 
I actually added a little bit of purple to this flounder's fins to kind of reference Ariel a little bit more. You know, I feel like that will make them a little bit more cohesive looking. But this flounder is to die for. I definitely love this flounder so much better. I feel like he looks so cute. I dry brushed the bottom of him with kind of like a more deeper gold. So it has more dimension. And overall, the face... And overall shape of this flounder is so much more cuter than the first flounder I made. This small flounder is going to swim away. We don't need you. You can go back to the first doll. And we will have our new flounder. For Scuttle, you guys know that they changed Scuttle. Um, she is now a gannet and not a seagull. Um, I couldn't really find a Gannet figure, so I found this from Amazon. It was like a pack of birds. This was called um, a Phalacrocorox Carbo. It can also be called um, a, a Cormoran. It's not a Gannet, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. But it was the closest to the Gannet look. And I, yeah, I was like, this can work. This can definitely work. And it was a good... Um, scale also to the doll. So I'm gonna go ahead and repaint this to make it look like um, Scuttle from the live action. I think out of all of the three, um, Sebastian and Flounder, this one kind of looked the most out of place, if anything, just because I was definitely referencing the live action, and I feel like it looked... I'm not gonna say it looked so real, but it definitely had a more realistic color scheme um, than the uh, Flounder and the Sebastian that I made. And I feel like it was necessary this time because um, my version of this aerial is kind of like the Under the Sea sequence aerial and also the reprise um, Ariel. Those are the two Ariel scenes that I was referencing for this doll. Um, so I was like, well, we need Scuttle then. Because, well, now Scuttle can dive underwater. So she definitely needs to be there. finally done with Scuttle, as you can see. I think it looks really, really good. I like her feathers. I like how blended they look. And um, that pretty much completes it. And now we're finally done with Ariel and Friends. Thank you. 